I love doing nail tech snails because I love the energy they bring and the excitement. There's nothing better when somebody walks in and is like, ah, and I'm like, ah, and then we sit down and we get to bring awesome content to you guys. This video is for the person who has the questions and the things and is doing nails, but they have all these, well, I'm not sure what do I do this and why do I do that in my RPM. So if you're like all the things and all the stuff and you're just like, you know what, I don't really know, but let's nail tech to nail tech talk about it. This is the video for you. You guys, today is so exciting. I'm here with Taylor. It is always fun to talk to another nail tech. And as we started talking, I realized Taylor needed to be mic'd up because she speaks for the nail tech. Okay, I don't know what that was, but here we are. Like, Taylor, talk to me about you took my class and you got comfortable going back to your old ways. Why do you think that is? Well, I didn't start using the drill right away. That w I think that's the problem. You have to kind of build your confidence, especially mm -hmm. with clients and things like that. And when you're kind of out of it, you don't know the bits and what to use and how to use them. So it, I feel like when you own a drill, you really have to build that confidence first. Now, are you currently using a carbide to remove product? Yes, I am. All right, what kind of carbide? Um, I think I just got a Cosmoprof, but I do not use like Erica's tools. That's why I'm here. That's awesome. Yeah. And like, do you already see the difference? Yes. How does it I feel? I can even feel the difference. Talk to me like, about what you're feeling. It feels much smoother, not mm -hmm. as like rugged, like it's like... Like catchy? Yeah. 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 Like it's ripping my gel off. It's more like just shaving it. Very smooth. I like that word shaving. Yes. We should use that word shaving, like buttery. Yes. Like you're not like forcing. So first of all, part of that is like our product. A lot of like the budget bits mm -hmm. are not made out of carbide. They're made out of stainless steel. But like, look at that, what was that? We're just talking and that was what, maybe three minutes? Yeah. And, and also running your bits way too low. Like we're at 25,000 RPMs. That's why it's not catching. These little flutes need to grip the product, okay? Felt good, right? Yeah, because it usually takes me a lot longer than that to remove. Really? Taylor, what I just did with you was the dragging technique. And what that mm -hmm. is, it's making sure it's a great way that I encourage my students to practice using a carbide because since we're dragging, it's not catching. Mm -hmm. When we start to rock the bit, those little teeth can actually wrap around mm -hmm. and cut your client. So, but sometimes with the dragging method, when we get to here, comfort goes away, okay? And it's like, I'm gonna cut my client, I don't have as much visibility. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend now, as you guys can see on all of her nails, see how I just have a little bit of product all on the right side? We're gonna rotate the hand, we're gonna bring it in just like this, all right? We're gonna go finger by finger, now, this is extremely important, Taylor. If you start right here with your carbide and pull the product up, it's gonna catch, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if I start where it's still attached, like you see where your nail is attached to the free edge right there? Mm -hmm. That is where I'm going to go up. Okay. And where it's not attached that free edge, I'm gonna go down, all right? Mm -hmm. I can show you what it's like to do this and what it's gonna do, it's gonna go <laughs> and it's gonna put a big dent, but your nails are so pretty that I really don't wanna mess them up. But we, Thank you guys, you. let's be honest, we know what happens, right? right. We know, it's, and we're like, yeah, that's just part of it. Like, uh -oh. It was your hand, not my bit, right? And we're right. sweating and we're like, what just happened? Well, what happened is those flutes caught. All right, so we're gonna start right here and we're gonna put our barrel down very lightly and just go up. One pass! Ooh, I feel good. <laughs> and this is glitter, is it double glitter? Um, yes. Woo! Top coat, double glitter, yeah. on structure, one pass. All right, so see right where I hit it? This is exactly where you want to hit it, and then just hold down, and we're done. See how easy that was? And I still got to keep my torso straight. All right, let's do the other ones. Move inner finger parallel, right where it's still attached. We're going up, and then we're going down. And of course, it's always going to be slower for me because I'm trying to show you guys all my angles and all the things, just like that. And then we go down. Hey, you lay product really nicely. There's no lifting. Thank Way you. to go, girl. Way to go, girl. Okay, so right here, same thing. Just like that. So Taylor, we just removed that super quick. Tell me real quick how long it would normally take you to remove product. Um, Probably about 15 minutes. I think okay. all over prep, it's about 30 minutes. Okay, so including yeah. prep. Yeah. Because now you go to a buffing block. Yes. Tell me about that. I feel like it's just because I'm not confident with like the other bits and I really don't, like I've tried them. It just doesn't get as clean as I like them to be. Okay. So I just go back to the buffer. Which you know. So if I were to sit down and somebody came to you and was like, I want you to use all bits. How are you feeling inside? Um, dying. You're dying, yeah. literally. Yeah. Okay, and you're dying because? Just because I'm not confident with like, I just feel like when I use the cuticle bits and stuff, yeah. it just, 
I'm too afraid to like get into their natural nail bed too far. And like with the product, it just, with the luminary and then the natural nail as it grows out, because my clients go every four weeks. I just can't like smooth it blend it right you know what I mean and I feel that buffer just gets it how I want it you know no I love this so that's a lot of times what people are thinking too so like at this point do you feel like this is us talking to all the nail techs so today what's really exciting about Taylor is we are talking nail tech to nail tech she is representing you so there's no silly question and I cannot wait to hear your guys's comments below of oh my gosh, that was the thing that I needed to know because I've been doing this. Like, this is called a community where we're growth minded, okay? We're also everything we use today, we're gonna put in the comments for you because we want you to easily shop out where if I can do it, Taylor can do it, you can do it, and we can make you successful That's with right. the Erica's tools. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! I love Very this, exciting. yay! <laughs> okay, so at this point, what would you do? Do you feel like you need to smooth out anymore? Yeah, I usually take my the same carbide bit that you just used mm -hmm. and kind of like Keep going. blend it out a little. And right. then I take my buffer and kind of blend to the cuticle and, you know, blend around. But I feel like even sometimes I have to take like a file to get some of that lifting, you know, how like. So if you have like a little bit, like, let's just say right uh -huh. here, this silver part yeah. is lifting. Okay. Yes. You would take a hand file and do that. You wouldn't use your carbide. Um, no, because sometimes I'm afraid it's going to get too far into their like natural nails. I, okay. I really am nervous about ruining people's natural nails. Natural nail um, integrity is very important to me. I'm so glad it is. And it's like sometimes when someone's heavy handed, it's more hard, difficult to coach them in because it's absolutely you've been hurt, haven't you? Well, I'm very <laughs> heavy handed, actually. You are? Yes. So that's why I think I'm a little bit more nervous about yeah. things like that. Do you find at the end of the day that your hand is tired because um, you're like holding back? A little bit yeah okay All and right. I have like I've had frozen shoulder and stuff too yeah. I think from that over filing okay. and things you know mm -hmm. and leaning and doing improper hand like how the way you were holding my hand I've not done that yes and I've like you know leaned too and much. I've caused fro frozen shoulder okay and it's caused back issues so and then we're overcompensating. Absolutely. And, yeah. Okay. So sometimes people want to really smooth this out because they think it's easier to lay the product when the nail is really smooth. There's other people that are like, hey, especially with using a product like Luminary or the Accents Trinity, is that it has a thicker base, so they just float it. There's not a wrong or right here. It all comes down to what your style is, but also tiny. What is gonna be more efficient? If we're putting our carbide down and doing it now by hand, I wanna stop that behavior and try to do as much as I can with a bit. So what's nice about Taylor is she doesn't have like any lifting. If she did and making it smoother for her was a priority, I would jump into my sandy band. So on here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys with a sandy band. So I have reduced my speed to about 7,000 RPMs. I'm using the Erica Zebra sanding band, and this is gonna feel a little more vibration to our client because it's running so low. So now I know some of you use like your flex base more as a polish than floating it. So that's most of the time when people want to have this pre-applied product really smooth, okay? Now, do you feel like that's you, Taylor? Yes. Okay, where others are like, hey, I'm gonna float it on. There's no wrong or right. So what we're looking for is that, that you can't even see, can you? Like where the product is, where that regrowth area, no. right? So usually we're doing that by hand. So I'm at 12,000 RPMs. This is also like before we had a little bit of lifting, I can just tap that right out. This is gonna save my hand so much, just going back and forth. I always pick up my e-file versus going like this. And the reason for that is just because of heat and over filing especially if we're taking off the nails. Now, I would reduce my RPMs, do my cuticle work only if my client is more prone to lifting. If my client's not, then I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in with my big E. Now, I love your nails because the big E, remember we have to say it like that, even when we feel silly when everybody's <laughs> looking at you in the recording studio. Look at that. Even with just the sanding man kind of starting to push it back, some of you are gonna wanna use a pusher right now and some of you are just gonna go straight in with the big E. What I like about the big E is it has a larger surface area and I can just gently focus on removing the dead skin cells. I'm at 7,000 RPMs, just learning her skin. You can always start off low and build that confidence and then increase your speed, okay? Now she's a little crusty because it's cold here. I'm just gonna lay that bit down right on her skin. How's that feel? That feels good. Yeah. Just very smooth. Very, very smooth. It's not catching. And this is really gonna help when I apply my polisher ball or my biggie in fine with the cuticle oil. 
This is where just giving you a nice hand exfoliation. This is where I really struggle. When my clients, they go four weeks in between and they get a lot of buildup in those corners. And I don't really have a, you know, something that I can really get in there with that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's nice about using a bits in the different sizes and having a few mm -hmm. is that you're getting more of a precision look, right? We have these small tools versus taking a hand file and trying to get up in there. Like, how do you get a buffing block to remove that? You have to do a pusher and then you buff. And pull and push. It's time consuming. And you're also wanting to make sure that you don't tear the rest of the cuticle. Where I'm just right here and I just switch straight in and now I'm exfoliating. Now, this is the big deal, you guys. I'm running at 7,000 RPMs, right? So I'm cleaning this up, but guess what? I'm also touching some products. So that big question, is my bit gonna last 150 services or 300? Touching the skin and the nail plate, we're gonna be more at 300 uses, depending also on how it's being disinfected. Your bits are corrosive. They should never live in water or any kind of chemical or liquid, okay? But that's what you're talking about right there. You're like, I wanna get that piece. So this is where a lot of times people get stuck is I wanna keep getting that. We gotta move the service forward. So. It's where I obsess over, you know, those lifting spots of trying to get them out, you know, mm -hmm. with a buffer or a file. Mm -hmm. And it makes my job a lot harder. And now I switched my e-file into reverse and I'm starting from the left side and working to the right. So prep time, depending on how you're timing yourself. So let's talk about that removal less than 10 minutes and your prep. Now, this is going to vary depending on your product and how you're going to end the service. Usually structured gel manicures, people spend a little more time on that cuticle work. But if you're going straight into like soft gel tips or dip, this is usually when you just need to do the basics, okay? Is depending on your services, I would say your prep and cuticle work are usually going to be in that 12 to 20 minutes. And that includes also the free edge shaping, okay? Now the range for that is because it depends on the service and also you know where you feel more efficient so my pain point in a service where i usually take more time and need to improve is actually doing the free edge like that shaping and making sure they're all uniform so so far what do you think i think they look good the good. prep is it looks good and how did it and how did it feel it felt nice easy yeah smooth smooth didn't hurt at all didn't hurt at all very buttery She's not even kicking me, and I didn't even give her that line, but I love it. Brand on, boo. We're going to also go in there with a flame. Have you currently used a flame? Uh, yes. Yes. All right. So this is our Erica's Precision Flame. And as you can tell, the grit is, looks a little different, and the grit is going to be indicated by these little painted lines. So blue is for medium, and red is for fine. So I'm going to start off with fine. So I usually start my flame off at about 8,000 RPMs. I'm in the forward direction and I'm not leading with the point. So this is leading with the point. We don't wanna do this, we wanna lead with the belly. I'm at 45 degree angle to make sure my tip is what's touching the nail plate. I'm on the nail plate and I'm sweeping. See how you can see my bit right underneath? Mm -hmm. And I'm pulling out any of that dead skin cells. And you don't just go in for the kill. You go in and you just gently are feeling for that debris. Now this is the crazy part when I'm teaching is sometimes people just wanna dig it out. We ain't digging for gold, okay? We're get, we're touching a human, and hopefully they're gonna tip us well. And it doesn't. Hurt. I'm tipping hard to be here. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Now, if it's really tight, that means we stop. If it's tight and there's sensitivity, so some of you, my perfectionist, I love you, but you're like, I gotta get in there. No, they're peeing their pants. Please stop. All right. We can also work towards regression, but here we're underneath and we're pulling. See how much more this has opened up. Now what I'm going to do too is I'm just going to ever so lightly take the tip of my bic. If you're nervous about using an e-file, there's two things that I want you to do. First is you're already doing it. Congratulations. You're getting information and you want to be educated. You have a growth mindset. Second thing is I want you to head over to Erica's ATA, check out our car by bits, all the other bits and videos that we have. That way you take the great tools and you pair it with great education, which is going to give you a superior product. You don't need to be scared. You just need to be informed and then practice, practice, practice. Let's go ahead and jump back into the video. Working down. We're never flossing. I see this a lot. You guys, it's easy to do this, but what happens when we do it? We're damage. And what do you care about? Nail integrity of the nail. And we're not going to do that, right? So we're going to go off to the side. Okay, so like right here, I can feel it catch. Can you feel that, Taylor? Mm -hmm. That means I'm gonna spend a little more time there because something, something is that dead cuticle and we're just sweeping it away. Now we're gonna come right down here and clean it up. Because if we don't and I drag it, that integrity is gonna be jeopardized, right? We're gonna lose that track, but we still wanna clean it. Pulling it out, 
keep moving the service forward. I would say using our big E or the micro taper and one of our flames is probably the most popular combination we see for structured gel manicures because a lot of our nail techs really like that tuft look. So are you going on one side and then you're going to go back and go I on sure the other am. side? Okay. And I do that because I want to work the opposite direction of which my bit is spinning. If I'm over here sometimes, it doesn't lift the same way. So I would rather quickly work where my tools are going to be the most efficient. Now, another thing is too, sometimes people use those brushers that are like right on their hands and they go like this. But what I'm seeing is that's taking a lot of time. Like we need to get through this. Editorial nails, pretty nails is like, oh, I want to get every little piece I keep brushing. I'm not saying you should or should not do that. What I'm saying is you got to make sure you're within a time frame where you're making money, not a hobby, a job. Job needs efficiency. Growth comes with process. You can only be as quick as your process allows. So keep moving forward. I'm going to switch out my bit and show you guys what the medium can do. So I just did the left side with our precision fine bit. Now, what's nice about Taylor is she's a swinger. Just kidding, we're not gonna put that in there. Is what's nice about Taylor is her cuticles, like I literally, somebody could like throw me any bit and I can make it work, okay? So that's really fun. Like, oh, I could use this, I could use this, I could use this. So for my affiliates, it's nice to have a client like this because literally you could like try new things on. For the people in the back, I would not switch to a medium in the middle of my service, but I want you to visually see the difference, okay? And look how tight this is. I literally was right here opening it up and what a difference it makes to just go that extra step to allow the product to get a little farther back. Now, this is what's important about the forward and reverse is now I'm gonna drop my barrel right here and I'm gonna open up the other side. Cuticle always wants to relax, so then this is just gonna relax right on top of the color when we're done. the big E and medium I showed you what a flame that we can open it up look how beautiful this is and yes I know we still have this little guy right here that we'll get with the nippers I just wanted to show you how real this is and lastly you see this little rim right here I know some of you want to cut it for me I would rather refine it all right so I want to make sure that's stepping up so I've already used this tool so instead of grabbing the refine ball I want something with a round edge and that's what's really nice about the big E First, I'm gonna like just smooth this out. Pull it tight, circular. Nice and smooth, circular motion. Now when I get here, I can't go this way, I have to go opposite direction. So we just shape the nail, we remove the dust. Beautiful, oh, and now we're ready for color. Of course, I'm gonna use my Lunilux oil. Make sure that dropper does not touch the skin. All about being sanitary. Rub it into the nails, but not too much. We want the Lunilux to still be shiny because now I'm taking the polisher at 20,000 RPMs. If your client tends to be a little more tender, that's, a, oh my gosh, this is the best day ever. Look at that. That's what I want to say. As now we are rehydrating this nail, beautiful, right on the lip of that cuticle and we're softening everything that we were filing. Isn't that beautiful? My client's already talking about how much she loves the smell and that's why we offer retail sales. Our little Lunus are for our clients to purchase. What's great about the little Lunu, it's, a, it's another effort to, instead of just throwing away the cute little container, is take it back to your nail tech and have her fill you up again. You can even get a different scent we encourage our nail techs to have all the scents because it's supposed to be like a curated event where you're not just getting cuticle oil. It's all about customizing. It's all about picking the scent that you like and then being able to go home and wear the scent. My little Lunu lives in my car cup holder. And when I stop like at a red light and I'm looking at myself and I'm just like, girl, you crusty? 
I'll take care of it right there. You guys know I was already excited about today's video, but what's even better is when we got to the end of it, she goes, Erica, I have this new confidence I didn't have before. Thank you so much for today. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here and allowing us to have this conversation so that we can help other nail techs. That's what it's all about. That is what this community is about. And this is what this YouTube page is all about. It's all about all that. So if you want all of it, like, subscribe, do the things, and let's just continue to figure it out together. Bye. Bye.